I'm very pleased uh, to introduce our guest speaker here tonight, uh, although he needs a little introduction, and certainly uh, not to this audience here at CEU and the School of Public Policy. Paul Collier is a prolific author, and his most recent book was just published about a month ago. Exodus, as the title is, takes on one of the most complex and controversial issues of public policy in the 21st century, namely immigration and multiculturalism in the 21st century. I think the Migration debate has been disastrous because it has become a debate about values rather than a debate about facts. It's been politicized before it's been analyzed. The key driver of that migration is, of course, the gap in income. And if we go back to about 1800, the income gap between the now developed world and the still poor world was much narrower. But let me predict that in the year 2100, the income gap between the rich world and the poor world will have narrowed decisively. When I was your age, I sat in a classroom like this and the lecturer told me why rich countries were rich and poor countries were poor. And what the lecturer said was, it's because the rich countries have a lot of capital and the poor countries don't. So that got us to the 1980s, and then in the 1980s, the answer was, oh, the rich countries are rich because they've got better economic policies. We're now getting right up to date, 2013, the most fashionable answer, why have the, the rich countries got better policies? Because they've got better institutions. So we've got to flow into the diaspora, which is migration. There's also a flow out of the diaspora. And the flow out of the diaspora is basically absorption into the host society. One concept of equilibrium is when does migration stop accelerating? And the simplest answer to that is when the diaspora stops growing. And the diaspora stops growing when the flow in equals the flow out from the diaspora. I was wondering if you could clarify how exactly you envision the um, creation of better social models or the improvement of social models in poor countries. Um, do, do you see it as uh, simply the social models being re-imported re from countries that had been emigrated to or would these be more sort of organic, locally grown social models? It's clearly an organic process. First of all, the social models are very different one country to another. Somehow the combination of institutions, narratives, norms and organizations um, fits together, coheres. The package works even if the individual components differ society by society. Should there be a right to migrate, what kind of right should that be? And can we even establish it uh, econom in, in economic terms? I'm not going to answer it now. That's not because I want to duck the question. I want to build up the building blocks, and at the end of you will answer that question yourself. Two of you will get to different answers because you will disagree not about values, I'm a good person, you're a bad person, but you'll disagree about some empirical aspect of how you actually sort of calibrate the building blocks I give you.